yeah. nice when you came in there. I we, we, we planted that with the caucus before you got there, Paul. Um, we knew you were a Red Sox fan, too, though, so that really helped. Uh, That's correct. Uh, so <laughs> oh, he's just jealous because the governor thought I was there. Stay in your corner. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to sit back to that. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, so we, uh, the caucus, the caucus, caucus actually go. went really, really well. Um, and just to be clear, you know, I, I, I guess sometimes when we're talking, you get the sound bites. But the details of the plan are going to come out, and we're going to make sure everybody uh, sees them. The problem with putting out bits and pieces of what we're thinking about now is if it changes, uh, there, there's many people out there that already have a level of distrust that if we say, oh, this is what we're thinking right now, and then two days later the bill comes out, doesn't include it, somehow it's an, aha, we got you, you lied to us. So we're being very deliberative about this of when the package is ready, we will provide as much information. Roland will come here, sit, answer questions. Uh, we did our caucus. Our caucus members still have additional questions and concerns, so Roland will be talking to individual members today, and then it's my understanding that the Senate will be caucusing uh, the, the draft of what we think we have moving forward. And as soon as that's all done, the caucus is clear. We feel as though we're in a good spot. We will make the necessary people available to answer whatever questions. Well, this is the so you're nervous the about the support in the Senate? No, I think it's the same process we did here. There, there was so many changes. and. Uh, uh, not to give away exactly what was said in the caucus, which we do protect, but one of the members said, this is amazing from where it is now to where it was four years ago. The level of detail provided in the plan, um, the time frames, uh, they feel much more comfortable with. I think we want to offer the Senate the opportunity to caucus and go through it. Isn't line. the holdup here, because you can't really say what the discounts are going to be, because it has to be approved by the NEPA first? No, I, I, I think we've addressed that very well in the bill, and I, when, when it comes out, I, I think you'll Well, you'll what does that, that mean? I, you, know, you have to read it, Mark. Yeah, but <laughs> well, I can't read it. Give it to me now. Well, we'll give it to you when it's ready. Yeah. That's what I've just been saying for five minutes. What yeah. did you make of the governor's impromptu speech yesterday? It's unprecedented, right? I mean, did Malloy do that to try to push the debate one way or another? I, yeah, I, I, Malloy did come into the caucus once before, but... Look, this is very consistent of, of where the governor's been. He, he enjoys engaging in the discussions. For a governor of the state of Connecticut, or any governor of that matter, to put himself out there in front of the caucus and say, look, I know I made this more difficult than it needed to be. Um, I, thought, I thought the honesty um, was very refreshing. The vulnerability at some point of saying that was very refreshing also. Uh, I, I was glad he came. Um, and I know he'll continue his conversations with individual members and folks around the state, but I like that he can. And what about, I mean, this whole idea, I'm gonna raise money for these people. First of all, how, how, how does he do it? Does he, does, he, does he give money to the party and then the party launches it down to you guys? I mean, well, I mean you know, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna bring business people yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, money, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, he has a lot of money. <laughs> that's more than me, I imagine. Look, and, and, and I don't wanna speak for him. I don't think that's the way he anticipated it coming out. Uh, uh, I think if he could have a do-over, he'd probably say it a little bit differently, but it's consistent. He said all along that we need to take certain steps to get the state of Connecticut moving. Well, and, if you, and if you support me, you stand with me, I will put my shoulder to the wheel, I will move it along, I will make sure you're getting the voice of the outside validators to come in and say you, you are doing the right thing. If you see the announcement, uh, a while back, CCM was there, the, some building trades were there, there was local officials, there was business leaders. I think that's the group he was referring to. But doesn't to. that create the appearance, not only, but it sounds like he's buying votes. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of horse trading that goes on in legislating yeah. and, 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 that's and what log I mean. rolling and all that other sort of thing. And but when the governor of the state, a, 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 a very wealthy individual of means, and, and his what do you wife say? Is if one I, of if the if fifth richest if, people if, in the in the in the country. Are you saying if I said the same thing, it wouldn't be the same credibility? No, no. I, I really I do mean, think he was facing ac accusations that he's trying to buy votes. Well, we won't do it in the merit. I'll tell you mm -hmm. what. We'll limit it to a uh, a dollar on on, on bus fare. Yeah. So look, look I, I really do think he was referring to the same rollout he had with the tolls. Obviously, you could talk to him about it. I I, I don't think, other than what happens in normal legislating, which individuals say look this is you know this is going to affect my district adversely uh but if we can do this maybe and it's not a buying of the votes it's people advocating on behalf of their districts that's what we all do so we'll see what happens i i think we're in a good place uh on tolls 
uh, but we have to make sure the bill is exactly right. And we're being very careful about just, that. Just kind of finish on this. Let's fast forward to 2020, okay? Our members participate in the campaign finance program. Mm -hmm. We have great restrictions and limits. So, I mean, oh, oh, come on. I, mean, I hear you what know, you're saying. You I, I know. I know. Citizens I, United, you, you guys, have, we wrote that law, and you know, governors can help, candidates can help outfits raise money to support them right up until the moment they decide to spend the money on them. I mean, there's, there's, parties there's can spend unlimited amounts. That's, that's why they, they should have passed our bill. Into the we, clean election system, and we, we did on the stairs. I'm, I'm not saying there's not ways around it, but I would just like to point out that our members do participate in the citizens' election program. Uh -huh. Has there been a decision made, at least as far as whether or not? The process would be if a bill passes that that's the final passage by the General Assembly that it won't come back to the General Assembly after it's reviewed by the Federal Highway Administration or it, I think that's still in discussions still in and discussion. I, yeah I don't want to put that out there until uh, the Senate has an opportunity to weigh in well, how about um, your how about your members what's was yeah. the sentiment as, as is the, it, my caucus it, I thought was very clear uh, they want to maximize the in-state discounts uh, they don't want to give any agency or department uh, a, a blank check with no oversight. Um, so balancing those and what exactly it means, and I think that's what we're working through, whether it uh, requires another vote, whether they have approval within limits, those are the type of discussions that are taking place. I think that'd be fair to categorize mm -hmm. how the caucus felt well, about it. There's a lot of questions, in, not a lot of questions. Yeah. Some questions came up in finance. You know, kind of like a sort of process issue, but who runs it? And it's not an inconsequential question. I mean, does the state run it? Mm -hmm. Contract it out? I mean, was there any sort of discussion in your caucus on, on that aspect? Um, that was talked about a lot. Uh, and, and, and both sides, uh, I, I would guess folks feel most comfortable with like a bidding process where it's open and honest and uh, open and, and, and transparent where folks can come in if we're going to go to a provider. Uh, if we were to have it run by the state, they, they want to see what that would look like. So without speaking exactly what it's going to look like, and I'm not yeah. sure, yeah. Paul, but I would guess it would be some sort of RFP type process. Sure. But how with the state, select. you're talking about well, how many more people mm -hmm. we need, how much, uh, how much more should, we call, should how it be, much of that add, yeah. uh, add to our pension obligations, all that sort of thing. Should it be an entirely private entity? Should we enter into a public-private partnership with, with a bank or otherwise, like other states have done? Uh, there's a lot of examples around the country, so it's very helpful. Uh, we've been contacting some of the national organizations, National Conference of State Legislators, getting information. So I would guess it would be a bidding process, and it could be any of either public, private, completely private, and maybe uh, oversight with uh, with our the, the, transportation the oversight about, board. I mean, the, the Easy Pass is the one everybody knows. Everybody knows what that's what it's going to be in the end. I mean, sure, you put it out for bid, but mm -hmm. they'll probably have the right bid. They might, but but also some some banks and even local banks can can do it themselves, right? I think Easy Pass or the Massachusetts DOT at one point in time was uh, linked up with Citizens Bank. Right. Um, I don't know what the parameters of that deal were. We're looking at, it, and I think the RFP process is the easiest way to find out. How much did the governor's flip flop on the tolls hurt you within the, hurt this cause within the your caucus? Uh, I don't. I, it. I think it made the emotions run higher about that. Anytime folks, rightfully so, feel as though they've been deceived, the, ele uh, the level of emotion just becomes a lot higher. You lied to me once, or you deceived me once, why aren't you gonna do it again? And I think that's what I was referring to. But I give the governor a, a lot of credit. I, I don't know what he was thinking of. I don't know where his mindset was. But to be so definitive, but yet to walk in after a complete evaluation of where we are with transportation and where the funds are and how much money we're going to need, to have the courage to come out and say, look, I, I was wrong. It won't do it. It won't be enough. That, that's pretty courageous. I mean, you can always criticize and go after somebody for things that happen. I think we all know that in politics. But, but the level of just vulnerability and honesty that this governor is showing, I, I'm impressed by it. To put himself out there and just say, hey, I, I looked at it, it's, it just won't work. Uh, I think it's refreshing. And I think it's a crazy notion that the election hinged on that, right? I mean, that's sort of what you've heard Bob Stefanowski say that, aha, that was the whole election, that was the 44,000 votes. No, no, it wasn't. Yeah. You know, that election, we all watched the debates. There was a, voters have different preferences and different reasons for why they vote. It I'm was sorry. one of the five. It was one of the five bigger issues. But people but it was have not such the only short memories issue. around here. The whole thing with regard to the lockbox was supposed to be a plebiscite on tolls, 
And then everybody decided, oh, no, 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 it's not. The election was a plebiscite about totals. I disagree. Of course I it was. I don't of think course it was. It was. How did I get elected? How did Alex Bergson get elected? How did Will Haskell get elected? Yeah. How did Masters get elected? That. It was the biggest policy issue on the table. Sure. It, it was one of the bigger the budget, policies. Aside the from probably, the budget. He, he, well, the budget's pretty big. Yeah. But Roland, it was not a referendum on totals. That, that was a big issue. It was not the issue. Roland the only Tom issue. Lamar, sorry, was quoted on the radio as saying that the amount of toll gantries has not been specified in this bill as we know that there's no set limit or number. And yet, you know, we've heard 83 to 50, and every time we see the governor, he keeps saying 50. What is the number? Uh, it will be clear when the bill comes out uh, again, as just you pointed to it, too. It, once the numbers change, people become skeptical skeptical of what you're saying. So let's wait till the bill comes out. I think it'll be clear the per mile per charge, uh, per mile charge will be in there, and how many gantries will, he that said, will be in there? He said in, in his colloquy with many of the Republicans mm -hmm. in the Finance Committee yesterday that it all had to do with NEPA approval, the it National does. Environmental mm -hmm. Protection yeah. Act. Is that what that yeah. is? Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure you're in compliance with that, mm -hmm. or nothing can get passed. Mm -hmm. right. So isn't that. Isn't, isn't That's why that this takes I, time. Isn't that what yeah. I asked you five minutes ago? Right. And, and I said, exactly as I'll say now, you can put parameters in place to where if it doesn't fall between the parameters, you either have to revote or it's a non-starter. So, where do we stand on Tobacco 21 and the vaccine religious exemption? Any chance that either of those could run to that? Yes. Tobacco's in the go list. Yes, yeah. Tobacco 21, I believe, is on the go list. That's uh, uh, depending on the time of the debate and and mood of the crowd. I imagine that's something that'll come up today. And Just the vaccine and the religious second. exemption? We'll have an announcement this afternoon. So on, this afternoon. On, on the vaccine? On, on is it fair to say, you're not going to have a reliable account until there is a final version. Is it? Is that fair that you're... I think, that, I think mm -hmm. that's completely fair. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, this is our third caucus on tolls, and, and, and Roland Lamar, uh, as a first-term first, first chair of the Transportation Committee, really has done an incredible job of taking the concerns of, of the caucus and things he heard at public hearings and forums around the state and trying to include them in the bill. So you're right. I think up until the last moment when the bill is finalized, uh, we won't be able to do a, a, an actual hard vote count. You're going to have way, an announcement this talking, afternoon. It sounds what like you're that pretty mean? confident and it, it is happening. The, the way you're talking, it sounds like you do have the vote. Chris, don't fool my confidence. I'm usually not I'm so good at it. Question. But I, I will say this. I am absolutely confident that my caucus understands the importance of this decision um, and what we're going to do on it, not only for the $250 million hole that will be in the budget, but just moving Connecticut forward. That report that came out was so telling that we're middle of the pack as states, which, you know, for us, that's an improvement, right? There was many years that we were lower in the rankings. The two major issues that are preventing us from cracking the top 20 and possibly the top 10 are infrastructure and finances. This bill, if we move forward with tolls, will tackle both of those issues. If we do prioritize progress, which again, we haven't heard anybody crying out for other than the other side of the aisle, it negatively impacts our finances. And if, if we do nothing, we're never gonna gain, uh, gain in the rankings. Uh, for infrastructure. This affords our residents the opportunity to make our state a better play, place with 40% of the money coming from out of state. It's a pretty persuasive argument. I think my caucus understands that. And I think one big change that we've seen is the business community. They're, they're really weighing in on this in a major way, and that is helping with members. Uh, the press conference that we had just going back three months ago, um, the support in Fairfield County from the chamber down there, it's making a big difference. And they're asking the other side the same question. Your proposal is to borrow $700 million. That's not serious. And so I think not only have they come out in favor of the governor's plan, but they're also saying there's no credible alternative. Like I said, we sort of joked about it. Borrowing that much money has been Democrats would come up with, not Republicans. You're going to have an announcement this afternoon that the vaccine bill is running today? No. Or about what we'll have an announcement about what we think we're going to do going forward. What you're going to do going forward. Yeah. So I had a chance to talk to the Senate this morning. So it's itself. not going to be coming up today? We're not running the bill today, no. But we'd is like it, to get to Tobacco 21. Is today. it coming up in the Senate today? No. 
Lincoln? You're just going to make an announcement. Well, I don't talk about the Senate. You're, gonna do <laughs> you're yes. just going to make an announcement on what you're going to do yes. to move forward. Correct. Sometime this afternoon. Yeah. Can't be more specific than that? That's pretty specific. No, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> an afternoon Before lasts almost time. a time. You can make the announcement right now. Oh, we're we're, 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 we're Sometimes between afternoon. 12 and 4. Yeah, 12 and 4. Oh, that's pretty go. good. I apologize for the vagary, but there are, people are working on a statement. Can so, you please sure. comment on the Excel Center? Mm -hmm. I know that you're supporting the governor. I know Malloy tried to push through a, a big uh, price tag on that. Uh, you're supportive, and how much do you think uh, you can really squeeze out of that facility and, and spend money on it to, to make it viable? It's getting to its useful life. We actually did, first of all, the governor's been great and his team has been great. We did a tour uh, probably about, I don't know, six weeks ago, yeah. and uh, it was pretty shocking. It, when you go down to the to the bowels of that place, and you look at some of the things that they're running the system on from literally 1970s, there's some systems that they can't even repair if they break because they're so old. But the governor's been very, very, very clear with me and very specific with the mayor and the Hartford delegation. He's not pursuing a $250 million bonded, taxpayer-funded renovation. He will not do that. What he is doing is using his connections and his experience to leverage and get us to a public-private partnership. He also acknowledges, though, that elevator repairs, boilers, that's hard to attract private investment for. You're going to have to clean her up a little bit to get her in a better spot, right, so, so that you can actually enter into those partnerships. So I think what you'll see bond funding to do is do the necessary repairs and infrastructure upgrades over the next 6 to 12 months. But we are, they are in earnest really looking for people to come in and help out this fall and get this done. What do you think that would cost, those maintenance? Boiler, and, I mean, what kind of money? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I would say in the budget we've put in somewhere between ten and twenty million a year. I think Mike, Michael Freeman from Serta thinks he probably needs somewhere around that over a biennium. But the major renovations, the stuff that's going to make people want to go there, the things where you are, you know, you know, changing the seats down low, doing all that stuff, building out the atrium, all those things, that'd be part of the public-private partnership. Ten to twenty million. It's an estimate, but you're talking boilers and you know just ADA compliance repairs. It's not the the main stuff would be a public private partnership. That's the goal. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. Um, do you, either one of you know what the deficit is that your budget negotiators are negotiating to close? No. Uh, we had updated the revenue estimate, so I imagine it's less than what it was to start with. No. Uh, I know we're due to talk some point this afternoon we may have those I, I, I don't know would help to know wouldn't it yeah but but also that's a process I always talk about it you know I, I know I well I mean you gotta you gotta you know you started out with a 3.7 billion dollar hole to close in two years you, mm -hmm. you've got new revenue estimates that came in it's a better place and they, 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 they cut that down so I was just wondering if you don't know you don't know yeah no I don't know the exact okay. number we can get it All for right. you yeah. I'm sorry Matt do you plan to have a news conference or just send out a press release if people want me to do questions we'd be glad to do those this afternoon sure. so you're going to send something out and then yeah. do Q&A you've been up to the press room the place I'd be glad to go up there no problem yeah, yeah. well you don't have to go to the press room <laughs> Mark's not there. <laughs>